They knocked on the door. It was James and the entire parish council. We know what you've been doing, Brad. We know all about it. Everything. The incense, the bells, the chant. It's okay. We can work this out. We want you to come back. So as many of you know, every couple of weeks, instead of attending mass at my local parish out here in the suburbs, I sneak to one of the more traditional parishes downtown and I attend the traditional Latin mass. And in one of my past videos, I explained why I thought that traditional Catholics should not just abandon parishes in the suburbs to go exclusively downtown. That, that we needed to have some presence in the more modern parishes just to try in whatever way possible through catechesis or, or whatever. But I guess I have to come clean because ever since that video first came out, I've actually had a huge change of heart on this topic. And I, I, I guess I have a little bit of a confession to make here because after telling everybody not to abandon their parishes, I've, I've been going to the traditional Latin Mass almost exclusively, and everything was going just fine. It was just my little secret and no one knew. My wife didn't even know, although I think she was starting to get a little suspicious, but I had a really good thing going. I never thought I would get caught until one day when there was a knock at the door and I opened it to find my buddy James, who just got elected to the parish council, and with him was the entire parish council. We know you've been going to the Latin Mass, Brad. We want you to come back. How did they find out? Was it because I haven't been there in six months? No, apparently no one even noticed I was gone. Did someone rat me out? Because ever since I started going downtown, every time I walk in that church, I see someone from my parish and I think, oh no, I've been caught. But always, every time, they look away from me, embarrassed, because they think I've caught them. It, it's okay. It, it's our little secret. I, I won't tell if, if you won't tell. So that wasn't it. So then how did they find out? Was it Paula? Because Paula, now Paula is so excited about the traditional Latin Mass. Unlike the rest of us, she's not keeping it a secret. Facebook post after Facebook post, she's clearly on a mission. Like she wants this traditional thing to spread like wildfire. And one day after mass, she tagged all of us along with some snarky comment for, for all those back at the parish in the suburbs. Did that do it? Is that how they found out? No, apparently everyone on Facebook has long since stopped paying attention to her trad rants and no one saw that post. So how did they find out? Yes, I know what you're thinking. Brad, you made a YouTube video about it. Like 10,000 people watched that video. But no, that's not it either because no one from my parish ever watches my videos. I don't even think they know I do these things. Oh, don't get me wrong. There's a flyer advertising my videos on the wall in the parish. One of my friends hung it up there and, and they've even been in the bulletins, but nobody reads the bulletin. So how did the parish council find out that I've been two-timing? Well, that's, that's a funny story. And if I had known then what I know now, what I'm about to tell you, I could have come up with a great lie for James and the rest of the parish council to cover my butt. But as it was, I just stood there dumbfounded, staring at them with my mouth hanging wide open. How did they find out? Well, apparently there was a fundraiser and the fundraising committee decided to call up every family in the parish to ask for a pledge. And Tom, he got the Shapizi household and I've been dodging his calls for weeks, weeks. It's nothing personal, Tom. I dodge everybody's calls. But ever since that accident with the tree, I'm way in the hole. I, so I got nothing to give anyway. So after weeks of not being able to get a hold of me, my wife is coming out of mass and Tom sees her in the narthex. So he runs up to her to ask her to sign the little pledge card. And right there in the narthex filled with people, some of, some of my closest friends, friends who were at our wedding, baptisms, confirmations. And I don't think she meant to say this that loudly, but you're just gonna have to talk to Brad about that. And I don't know when you're going to see him since he doesn't even go to this church anymore. James looks at me and says, we've been talking to the liturgy committee. We can make this work. 
How, how about if we put in an altar rail? Would would that make you happy? Would 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 you come back an altar rail? Really? Are you serious? Well, what what about the music? Well, we spoke to the worship committee and 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 they're willing to work something out too. But what about the artwork? We really don't have a committee for for that kind of thing, but but I'm sure we can work something out. But a real altar rail? Really? Well, hold on. So so actually a a real altar rail might be might be kind of confusing to everybody else. They they wouldn't know how to use it. So what? What what do you mean? No, no so no altar rail? So what we were thinking was giving you and the other fanatic schismatics like your own special little area, like like a special section just just for you. And I thought we could call it the trad pad. But some of the others, they didn't like that idea so much. They thought we should call it the reliquary. But anyways, right there in the trad pad, we could put in your own custom altar rail. Well, I mean, the budget committee, they didn't actually approve the funds for that. So what do you, what do you think about that, that fold up kneeler thing that we use for weddings? Really? Well, what, what about the music? Well, what we were thinking is that we could put the trad pad right there in, in the cry room and then you won't really be able to hear the music anyways. I mean, you trads love babies, right? What, what's that thing you always say? If you're not crying, you're dying. No, no, that that won't work. There, there's hardly any crying in the cry room. Yeah, so there's a whole lot of extra space in there that no one's using, so so it works out. Well, what about the art? Can we can we please do something about the, the plants and the bowls of sand? I, I don't think we have a committee for that. Really? Well, well, who waters the plants? There's there's no plant committee. Brad, they're they're not real plants. They're they're plastic. You don't you don't have to water plastic plants. Look, what's it gonna take to get you and the other schismatics back? Can we just have a traditional Latin mass? You mean in Latin? That that's crazy. No no, I want to understand what's being said. I don't speak Latin. Why would anyone want to have a mass in Latin? James, I'm so glad you asked me that. I'll tell you what, for you and the entire parish council, the budget committee, the liturgy committee, the music committee, the decorating committee, and the plant committee, I'm gonna make a special video just for you, explaining exactly what is so special about the traditional Latin mass. And you can watch it by clicking right here. So exactly what is so special about the traditional Latin Mass? Why would anyone prefer to attend Mass in a language that, that they don't even speak?